In section 2.4, we studied the, the different measures of variation, uh, such as the variance and standard deviation, which are great to associate when you have a mean. Now, if you have, say, a median, what we can do is start talking about these things called quartiles. So there's going to be three quartiles. And the reason why they're called quartiles with the prefix quart is that it breaks up your data set into four parts, right? So you need the three numbers to break it up into four parts. And those are represented with Q sub one, Q sub two, and Q sub three. And these approximately divide an ordered data set into four equal parts. So the four equal parts is the quart and the quartiles. So about one quarter of the data falls on or below the first quartile. Sometimes I'll refer to it as the lower quartile. Um, and that's just represented with Q1. And about half of the data falls on or below the second quartile. And we've already seen the second quartile before. The second quartile is just another name for the median of the data set. You just order your data set, find right where the middle is, and that's going to be the second quartile. And then about three quarters, so about 75% of your data falls on or below the third quartile. Essentially, we're going to find the median, which divides our data set in half. And then in the lower half, we're going to find the median of that, which is what we call the first quartile. And then in the top half of our remaining data set, we're going to find the median of that, which is going to be the third quartile. Um, just like how range was a very rough approximation of the spread of our data, we can start talking about what is called the inner quartile range, which you'll see it shortened to capital I, capital Q, capital R, IQR. And that's just going to be the range of the middle half of your data. So you take the third quartile number minus the first quartile number, that is your IQR. Let's look at this example. So we wanna find each of the quartiles and then figure out the IQR for this data set. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight data values, which means that when we find Q2, which again, this is just the median, since we have an even number of data values, we have to come from either side and meet in the middle, which is both at 12 and 13, and we take the average of these two. All right, so 12 plus 13 gives us 25. Divide that by two gives us 12.5. So that is Q2. That is the median of this data set. I'm just gonna draw this for Q2 right here. Now, notice that that divides our data set smack dab right in the middle. So we have a lower side that contains 7, 10, 11, 12, and then we have an upper side which contains 13, 14, 16, and 17. And so to find Q1, we find the median of these four data values, 7, 10, 11, 12. Since again, we have an even number, we go from either side till we meet in the middle. So we have a 10 plus 11 over two, so that gives us 21 over two, which gives us 10.5. There is our Q1. That is our first quartile at 10.1. And then for the third quartile, we do essentially the same thing. So we come from either side till we meet in the middle. We had a 14 and we had a 16, and we have to take the average of those two. So that's 30 divided by two, which gives us 15. So our third quartile is at 15. And now to find the IQR, we take Q3 minus Q1. Q3 was 15, Q1 was 10.5, and that gives us 4.5 as an IQR. Neat. Now, those are three numbers. 
And it's also good to state what the minimum entry is and what the maximum entry is. So once you have the minimum entry, the first quartile, median, third quartile, and fifth entry, that leads us to this five number summary. So if on an exam or a worksheet or something like that, I ask for the five number summary, these are the five numbers that I'm looking for. And these five numbers allow us to create what is called a box, a box and whisker plot. That is a typo. It is a box and whisker plot. So first step is to always find the five number summary of the data set. Once you have those five numbers, you construct a horizontal scale that spans the range of the data. So you look at the range of the data, which is the maximum value minus the minimum number, and you make sure that you have a copy of the number line that at least has that range spread out on it. Then we plot the five numbers about the um, horizontal scale. So you're going to plot these points, and I like to plot them slightly above the axis so that when we go ahead and draw in the box from the box and whisker plot, um, we can really see the box and the whiskers themselves. So once you have the five numbers plotted, you draw a box from Q1, the first quartile, to Q3, the third quartile, and then Inside that box, you draw a vertical line at where Q2 is. And then from there, you draw these things called whiskers from the box on the left-hand side to the minimum entry and the box on the right-hand side to the maximum entry. Let's look at the first example over again. So we have first the minimum entry which was seven, we found Q1 was 10.5, we found the median to be 12.5, and we found the Q3 to be 15, and our max is 17. So first and foremost, our range of the data set is 17 minus seven, which gives us 10, and our IQR, was 4.5, right? So range and inner quartile range are slightly different. And that's just something that we have to be conscious of when we're talking about these things. So I'm gonna draw a copy of the number line. And I'm gonna start at seven and end at 17 and divide this up into 10, well, essentially 10 separate parts. So there's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's call this 16 and that 17. So that's 16, that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And you get the idea. So we're first going to plot our five number summary above the number line that we created. So 10.5 is halfway between 10 and 11. 12.5 is halfway between 12 and 13. And then 15 is above 15. Now what we do is we create a box from Q1 over to Q3. Right here's Q1, Q3. And we cut that box at Q2. And then we connect a whisker to the maximum value and a whisker to the minimum value. And that is our box and whisker plot. Neat. And the IQR is the thing that allows us to determine if we have any outliers in our data set. So an outlier, right, remember those are the values that are kind of far out and that kind of may affect our interpretation of the data, um, is one that is larger than 1.5 times the IQR above the third quartile, 
so it's somewhere all the way out here, or it's 1.5 times the IQR below the first quartile, so it's somewhere out here. Right, so 1.5 times IQR is a very important concept to remember when you're determining outliers.